Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Barber's Arms, episode 29 in what is lockdown two, the sequel. Here we go. Tonight, coming up, we've got Cy and Gaza's news desk, which is going to be a big one tonight. We've got lots of stuff to discuss in terms of the last week that's just happened. Around about 8.30, we have our guest on tonight, which we thought was very poignant in terms of what's just happening. So we have got the main man himself, Keith Coniford, who's the chief registrar for the Hair and Barbering Council. Keith will be joining us in Barber's Arms at 8.30. We've got Gazza's Cocktail at 8.45. And then me and Gaz will take you till we finish. And we've got some great things tonight to help you through lockdown, where we're going to talk about different TV programmes to watch, what we think is going to be really good. Some of your favourite all-time films that it's nice to revisit. And also about what your targets are over this next 27 days left before you're back at work. Without further ado, please welcome my co-host, Mr. Gary Machin. Thank you very much, Sammy. How are you, mate? Yes, I'm uh, considering everything, guys. I think it's been a tough week, um, a tough week last week. And before we move on, um, I think, you know, we, uh, we obviously last week, we didn't feel it was um, out of respect for what happened last week. We didn't think it were right to come to Barber's Arms last week. So oh, everybody understood what we said. Um, I think the message that we put up on the banner said it all. Um, I, you know, I just think it was a real, real tough, tough, sad week in British Ederson and Barbering to lose such great characters in Sam Wall and Tony Roberts. Um, and before we start tonight, <clears throat> I know there is a lot of people at home who... Uh, are watching this, and I think it's important that we all have a, a drink. Most definitely. To Sam and Rob and Tony. Robert. Tough one. <clears throat> I'm still a bit emotional about that, as you can see, guys. I think it's a real <clears throat> tough time for everybody in, um, in, in this time. And, you know, no matter what we say about it, you can try and put, uh, try and polish it as much as you can, but it's not, not the very, you know, it's, it's just a real, real tough time. My thoughts go to the families of Sam and uh, Tony, and um, hopefully we did the right thing last week by showing them such respect. Two fantastic characters in the industry, and uh, you know, uh, God bless to your families and uh, rest in peace, guys. Yeah, I, you know, obviously we, I mirror that completely and I think it was totally the right thing to do. We both weren't in it. I mean, it was such a shock, wasn't it? I mean, Sam for, to start off with and then later on in the week, this week, we, we've lost Tony as well. But, you know, such a creative soul, lovely fella, um, you know, lit the room up when he came in. I, I met, you know, Sam probably five years ago, six years ago, first time. Um, judged him in some of the BBA competitions and since then he's got on to bigger and better things and you know he's won competitions he's been finalist for all sorts of things own brand you know seems like he was flying but we just don't know what's around the corner mate do we uh, yeah and you know I think this week for me I know you've all been chocker block as well Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday some of you up on Sunday I think um, we said today on the new Daily Arms blog the first one was today. Um, Gaz, you're on tomorrow, which is a tough one for you tomorrow. Coming out yeah. of Friday night, you've drawn the short straw there. Do you see how quick I were today? I could have let yeah. you done today, but I'm very sneaky. I got them vlogging early today, but I think Trevor pre-orchestrated that, that we'll get you on tomorrow morning. So don't forget to tune in to, uh, on our Facebook, uh, on Insta stories. Also, you'll get email from the BBA as well. You can see on the BBA Facebook as well which is the new feature to Barber's Arms, which is our daily arms vlog throughout lockdown. I'm going to count down that, you know, I think it's 27 days left before you reopen back up. Um, we've, we've been here before. There's nothing tonight that's going to be said about, you know, guys, you've been here before. You can do this, you can do that. You know, keep, it's tough. And uh, hopefully we're just going to count these days down and up and give you that bit of inspiration tonight. And I think Gaz fetching Keith Coniford on, from the uh, the registrar chief registrar of the air and beauty uh, industry and the council, I think that's going to be good tonight to ask Keith a few questions about government issues, us being pushed about and can't and dropped down again, um, and also about this this issue about the VAT percentage. It might be nice for Keith to answer some of these questions tonight. 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, Keith's chomping at the bit to come on. He's, uh, you know, he's a very knowledgeable guy. He's been in the industry a long time, seeing things come and go. But, you know, these things are unprecedented. I know we use this word a lot at the moment, but for me, you know, and I'll just go back to yesterday. I don't think I would, I'd want to do the vlog today. To, you know, yesterday I was, well, I spoke to you on the production meeting, you know, I was all over the place, to be honest. It, I, I can honestly say it's probably one of the worst weeks in the industry I've ever had. Um, it's not only have we lost two great characters, but, you know, we lose people. I know that. But in the, the circumstances that we lost Sam as well, was just such a shock. Uh, and just remind everybody, everybody just look out for each other and just, you know, be good and be kind to everybody around you. But not only that, it's, you know, with... It, it, it took me like a like a, a thunderbolt really on Saturday. I never thought that uh, Boris would go from the regional into a full lockdown again. I, I don't know if I just pushed it away or I just didn't want to believe it. It was just I just didn't think we'd do it. And it, the emotions that came over me, I was angry at first, and you know, um, we had no need, no no time to really react. We just got get out there and smash as many haircuts as we possibly could. But when I got up Thursday morning, to be honest, uh, said tra to my team again, as usual, you know, we did the usual bits and bobs and cleared the shop. You know, I got up Thursday and I really struggled, to be honest. I thought, what have we done, all, what have we done it all for? You know, we've done all the sacrifice, we've done all the PPE, we spent a lot of money, spent a lot of time, done all the training. And, you know, I don't know if people have seen the the R rating for our industry, but we've we've only sent the R rate, the R number up by 0.05%. So categorically, we have not added to the misery. So, however, I, however, we, however, we are, we are in still this- some stats, Gaz, where people have gone down high streets and there's seven or eight barber shops and maybe four of them haven't been doing things properly. So, you know, you are, um, you know, I've seen lots of people change salons because it started off fantastic where everything was PPE to the top. And then it's just gone back to normality. And, you know, guys, you've got you've got to do the right thing. You've seen what's happened. These fuckers aren't going to be shy at slapping your wrist and saying, see you later, shut you. And it's no good for everybody who's doing it right. So when you do get back on 2nd of December, you've had a buster these, this last week, you're going to be packed when you get back. And if you work your figures out and look, to, look at what you did this time last year, you'll be up. You're going to lose a few weeks, a few, you know, these next 27 days, 28 days that's left. And then when you get back, you're going to be packed. So when it comes out of it, you, hopefully with your government funding and stuff, we should be on an even keel, hopefully. Um I've got some stuff that me and guys are going to talk about later to, to keep you on track while you're off as well, a bit different to what you did last time. But just do the right thing. Just do the yeah, right yeah. thing. I, I, th I, think, I, think, I think that's right. I think, I think we should do the right thing. I know we're doing it for the right reasons. It's just that I've, I, I, I did really come out of, out of Wednesday's you know, madness. Almost like a feeling of... I was finishing for Christmas again. You know, we get we had clients tipping us our Christmas, yeah, he's, he's, he's Christmas tip in case they don't see it. And I'm like, what is happening? The, the mindset of people. And, um, you know, from an employer's point of view, I know the money, money isn't everything, but, you know, for, I know you say we're up for this time of year, but we've got a month, three days doesn't make a month. And, no. it, you know, from, from a... A business point of view, it goes beyond that. It's the damage to your business as well. We were just turnover wise, we were just getting back to where we were before. And now it's it's kind of gone out the window. And people do it takes a little while for especially for consumer confidence and people to come back and use us. It, it, it is hard. And I was like I said, I was devastated. Um realization that we're actually in this state again and, and what's to stop us from i don't want to be doom and gloom but we've got to be real about this we've got to be able to yeah. deal with it rather than try i don't and think keep, i don't think any of our viewers to tonight or in the week who's listening to us would expect us to be any different to what we are we're having a beer in barbara's arms and we're going to just say it as it is and some weeks it will be very motivational on here some weeks you'll have different guests we'll have a crack but there's some weeks where you have to 
I think you have to do the right thing. And our job, what me and Gary have hopefully tried to do, and just on that as well, I'd just like to thank David and the guys at Barber Evo um, for the fantastic feature that his arms um, had on for his video. As I feel not no shame in sometimes, look, we're going to talk about this tonight. Gary, I was on the production meeting and I've had my own team meeting today with some of the top names in the industry that I'm lucky enough to, to manage in the team. Um, just talk through the process of the last day. You, you've been really busy. You've got a, a lot of young, you know, good, fantastic barbers working for you at a young age. What was your parting words with them? How would you describe your last day on Wednesday? And what do you say to keep them kind of motivated that some people are viewing this week could probably think, I didn't say that, so I'm going to phone my staff up and tell them. Well, how did you deal with it? Well, you know, I hate to say, but, we, you know, we, we did keep in touch with Zoom and everything else like everybody else that has out there. But especially for the younger staff, you know, we, we've got apprentices that are just coming out of their time. They just taken, they started taking columns on. And, you know, I, I really, really felt for them. They were building the columns and it's almost been snatched from underneath them again. What I did say is, you know, look out for each other. We'll, I'll be in touch. Um, keep them really, really in the loop. That's that, that's the main thing. They got paid today. You know, they're uncertain as well what's happening. So we give them as much information as we possibly can, what the rate of pay is, whether it's going to be 80%, 100%. I mean, this is a, a mixed week as well. I mean, I know we're going to go on to other things tonight and give you some information about your businesses, but... You know, luckily, the furlough is just coming straight back. It hasn't been paid today, though. So your employers, just remember, that you guys out there, there are employed. Your employers are standing at your, your wages this week without taking it. Um, so the furlough will be paid weekly, I'm, I'm hoping. But this week is missed because they didn't get the, the site up and running. So that will be made up. But if you're paid weekly, you, your boss should have paid you today. But what I'm saying is, um, it's just almost, you know, when you've got 40 staff or whatever, you can't go around every individual one, but we try and put an up. We've got great managers. You put an arm around them and say, right, this is how it is. You know, we, we have been here before, slightly different. I didn't think we would be back here so soon. But, you know, you've got to look out for each other. Um, some guys, look, you know, deal with it differently. I mean... Fair play to some of our, fair play to some of our guys. They've asked about second jobs because what's a little bit different from when we went to last time, it was felt like almost an enforced little holiday because we, we only thought it was going to be two or three weeks. The weather was great. You could get out, you know, um, sit in the garden. We're not having any of that this time, are we? You know, it's it's quite cool. It's so you can still uh, still exercise and everything, but it's gonna be a different feeling. So some of the guys have asked about second jobs. You know, they've actually said, can I do a delivery job? Yes, you can still claim your furlough and still take a different job. But remember, you know, you'll be taxed at social tape. You, you'll pay a little bit more tax because you'll be on 20 percent because it's the second job. Um, but people have got to just keep the, the minds active and, and, you know, get out there and do the right thing. Like you just said, because you are not allowed to go out and cut hair, you know, even though. There's, there's so many mixed messages from the from the government at the moment. I mean, tradesmen can go into other people's houses as long as they are offering a service. Now we're close contact service. We still cannot go into other people's houses and cut the hair. You can go in and fix the right. boiler, go in and fix the door, but you cannot go in there and cut hair. So even you guys who are, who are you know, from a, a mobile point of view, you cannot go in there. You will be fined if you get caught doing that. So yeah, I think I've seen a few he, clips today on YouTube. Some guys yeah. who have they're working on this common law and stuff like that. It seems hard work. It's um, the majority I, of us are in it, and it, um, quite, I think there's a very it, it's quite ridiculous. We had we had a guy in locally who, who put on Facebook. Uh, I'm opening him up today, two o'clock. The pub will be open. Um, you know, two fingers to COVID. This is happening, bloody. The police were sitting on his on his car park, closed him down, yeah. didn't even get the door open. You know well, the ones I mean? that are doing it are not the brightest buttons in the team because they're putting it on Facebook like, yeah, I'm going to open fuck you all, but come and get me. <laughs> it's not there, you know. Um, let's have a... Gary, I want to ask you a question. Um, 
I think there's a great quote, quote flying about that I'm sure a lot of you have read is that, you know, we're not in the same boat, but we're in the same storm. Um, and, you know, don't, don't think that I'm not feeling it. I've been told that you know, I've been a wall since March into the head office and probably not till next year. And we're talking about, you know, obviously at the minute there's no Christmas parties. We're going to have to do our staff awards virtually, which I'm a compare of. Um, but there'll be certain people who are working in the warehouses and the production team that are having some kind of, you know, they'll, they'll have outside caterers coming in potentially to, to do things because obviously they're in the bubble, but lots of us that are external are not going to get that. So I'm in the storm with you all. I'm in my own boat with the team, but um, we're, all in, we're all in this big storm together. But I ask a question of this sometimes, Gary, from a different point of view when we're interviewing for different things. But, you know, when you lock your shop up on Wednesday night, what did you feel as you walked away? Initially, I thought, what a waste of time. I honestly thought we'd done everything asked of us. We spent money, we'd done training, we fixed the shop to the point where we can't do any more. We, we've had trading standards in to check our, our service. They looked at our risk assessment. We change weekly because everything changes so much during during. Uh, the restrictions and I just looked back and I thought I cannot believe we're in this position again and I felt for the guys for, for the staff as well because you know they're down, down on the money but not only that it's um, I, ju I just thought I just thought from from my point of view I, ju I just felt a bit disillusioned I just I felt physically sick to be honest I just I, I, and, and it's the uncertainty as well because we've had so many people in, you know, they, everybody's got their own opinion, but we have policemen in to consultants at A&E to, you know, we have a broad range of clients and customers and we've got to work to the 2nd of December and I hope and pray that that's going to be the case because um, if it isn't, there's going to be, you know, some very unhappy people within the industry. And I, I know we're doing it all for the right reasons, but I will, you know, I, 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 was, I was gutted. I was absolutely dead. You know, when you, you think to yourself, I'm, you know me, I'll, I'll, I'll t you know, I'm off, off bank full kind of guy. Um, I'll always look on the best side. I'll always say, you know, we can get this. And I, I physically, at the end of on Wednesday night, I look back and switching the lights off, I thought, you know what? I can't believe it. You know, um, and we, and we wandered off in a, a you know in a separate. Diary. And I, can I just say as well? Just I know everybody's been fantastic around the country, but to all our team in in Rogers Barbers and the Academy RB training, you know they've been so professional, fantastic, bent over backwards for the clients. Customer service hasn't suffered whatsoever, and we've had a record numbers over the three days, but. Like I say, three days doesn't make a month, um, you know, and I know November's a quiet month, but our turnover is to keep 40 barbers going. It's, it's, it's a fair turnover, you know what I mean? And it's, um, I, I just, I, even the lads, even the lads were physically gutted to say, you know, as we're packing the tools up and clearing the shop, they're like, I can't believe we're finishing again. You know, it's... Um, but we are doing it for the right reason. So all I can say is to everybody out there, you know, think of the NHS. I know they're having huge numbers and a lot of staff are going down with this. So we're doing our bit and we've got to be professional and hold the heads high and we've done the right thing, most of us. But I just feel like at the moment, um, it's a lockdown in, in name, but not particularly, it's not all for all because there's so many things open. I mean... You know, you walk down the high street or you, I, I had to go into work, our alarm went off in work and we've got a big sign, a big illuminated sign as you're coming out of town. Um, uh, stay at home, no uh, essential, only essential travel. The roads, man, it was, it was like a normal Friday. It was, there was, there was cars everywhere. Schools were empty. The only things I could see that were closed, I mean, when we talk about close contact, and I'm, I get off my horse in a minute, you know, get off my wooden high horse, but you've got dentists still in, you've got chiropody still in, you've got physiotherapy still in, you've got um, people who are going into people's houses. I sat in my bedroom window on the edge of the bed today, 
somebody's moving the house across the road. There was eight blokes moving house, six or eight blokes or something. And, and, and I'm like, you know, it's as if everything's carrying on as normal. This, I know I was feeling a bit sorry for myself probably, but um, even, you know, Timpsons were open, B&M, you know, B&Q's open. It, does, it just seemed like the, the world was carrying on without pubs, <clears throat> hairdressers, bookies and car washes, really. Uh, I just... Well, this pub's not shut, though. We're still open. We're still open for business, guys. Every Friday over lockdown, every Friday after lockdown, we've got a Christmas party virtually from home. You're going to mix Gaz's five favourite cocktails. So we're still at it. I think, guys, you've just typified it, and, and I didn't want to touch on it with you. I didn't want to push it too much, because I know... You are where you are because you're emotional and you're so tied to your business. So it's fine yesterday the way you were. If you weren't like that, I think there was something wrong with you. You see me, yeah. I'm so passionate about war. You know, when I do my team talks, it's, it's as if it's me on company anyway. I won't change yeah. that. And that's why we are where we are. But just for everybody who's watching here in the UK, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, and all our friends across the globe, um, <coughs> I know most of you are back at work, but it just shows you just the, we're feeling it, us two on this show, as much as what you guys are at home as well. As I said, we're in the same storm together. So hopefully we can fetch a little bit of light and a bit of cheer tonight. A bit of information about uh, what's happening. Touching information, don't forget to follow us on his Instagram accounts, which is Simon Shaw Wall. We've got Gaz at the British Barbers and we've got. Um, at barbers underscore arms for all our Instagrams. And then on our website is um, thebarbersarms.co.uk. And if you want to email us, it's barbersarms at the British Barber. Guys, we've got a bit of information here. And again, we've made the right decision, the right call here at um, Barbers Arms. We had an exhibition, our virtual trade show, um, booked for the 29th and 30th. We've got some great brands already attached to this some international brands. We made a decision with the production team on Wednesday this week to actually think it's the right thing again to um, postpone that event till February due that none of you are back at work. Um, the demonstrations that the companies wanted to fetch we would have been a little bit difficult to do from remote venues and also as well out of respect for everybody who's not working and not earning any money, you know, obviously there's products to buy and we just felt it would be better when you're all back at work. And obviously by February, we're open vaccinations, antibody testing, everything's a little bit more um, on an even keel and we're not on this yo-yo of lockdown. So the exhibition that we had planned is cancelled on, uh, postponed, sorry, on the 29th and 30th of November. And we'll be redoing that in February, which will, over the next couple of weeks, we'll, we'll give you um, some information on that. When we finish with Keith tonight as well, we're going to talk to you about lots of little techniques that I've been using. Um, hopefully, you know, Gaz, we've been, been talking about some of the TV stuff that we've done and some targets that we want to achieve while we're on this second kind of lockdown. Um, but also as well, some things that's going to happen. British Hairdressing Awards is going to be in the month of November. The Wall British Barber of the Year and the Wall British Barber Shop of the Year are going to be uh, live on Insta and the Barber's Am, so lots of stuff to tune into, lots of nice stuff, so hopefully if you've got your calendars and your diaries about, you can pencil these in as well. I'm looking forward to tonight's guest, guys. Yeah, um, I know you very well, personally, Keith Colliford, he's a fantastic guy, good, uh, good guy to know, he's been around the industry for a long, long time, so he's due in, I think he's, he's just parking his car in the car park, he's going to give, I think we've got a three minute warning, oh we got moonshine on. Shall we just have a moonshine? Tiki moonshine. That's it now, anyway. I'm off my soapbox and we're, we're back to normal. We're in the pub now having a drink. Everybody's so. always at home, all our number one fans, all our top fans. You know who you all are. There's too many of you to mention now. You've been with us from day one. I'm sure while you've been even busy, um, you've been tuning in, but you might be back like watching us live now. All the best from me and Gaz and Barbara's arms. Thanks for tuning in again. All the best, fellas. All the best, absent friends. Uh, oh, baby. Oh, oh, I can't wait for your vlog tomorrow, to be fair. I think you should get absolutely bollocks tonight. 
And then I hey, want to make sure. Can I can I just say, that Steve had been some very kind words he gave us uh, last weekend. Um, he, he gave us some great great uh, review on the on the show. Steve, I know you're a local guy. Thank you very much, and all the people who watch us all around the world. Just just quickly, when we were talking about David and the team at Barberivo, got a little typo, David, if you're watching. Um, it was quite funny because our production team are the best in the country. They're fantastic people. Trevor Studd and Jackie Hillian. And But you actually got them as Trevor Hill and Jackie Studd, which I thought we, we found it quite funny well, anyway. But that's the first good. marriage we've had on uh, Barbara's house. A bit like Blind Day. What's your first wedding? I didn't know Jackie, you'd sneak you. I spoke to you three times this week. You didn't tell me you'd slipped off to Australia. I got through the borders. <laughs> Ross on top of Edward and Wood and Mally and going to marry Trev. Fair play to you both. Uh, he, was a fa- he must have been a fair old travel that, though. Fair, dink- fair dinkum for the wedding, anyway. We need to get Trevor on because he's doing Movember and he's got a little bit, I don't know if you see his facial head, it's trying to grow. Um, so I think, looking at the day, I think we should get him on around about the 30th of um, the 30th of November. So you've got a bit of stability to that. See that? See little lip? stability to your um, Tash for uh, that. We'll get him on. Um, so we're in the bar. We're having a beer, and uh, we've got um, have we got Keith Coniford in the house? I'm not sure if he's there yet. He's there, Mr. Keith Coniford. How are you, sir? Hi, Gary. How are you? Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear, mate. You're coming through great. Okay, let me just turn my volume up a little. You're looking very smart, Keith. Oh, am I? Thank you very much. (laughs) All for you guys. Well, just to let the viewers know as well that, as you can see, Matalan have got some fantastic winter gear in for the next coming season. <laughs> so uh, when it reopens up, get down to Matalan and uh, fucking tog yourselves out for the next coming months to stay in. Keith, right, it's great to have you on tonight. The Chief Registrar of the Hairdressing and Barbering Council. I think uh, from what I've spoke to people, it's the first time I've, I've physically met you, I think. But That's right, uh, it is. Um, Lots of people have got high words about you. We've got lots of people who have been messaging us throughout today. So it's a little bit different this week to our normal guest where we've got a, a barber on or an editor from around the world. Uh, in, in this lockdown tool, the sequels we're going to call it, there's lots of people pressing for answers, questions. Um, there's the bat issue that we're going to speak about. And uh, just to get a good insight, really, that our viewers, not only here in the UK, but everywhere else, can just get a better insight from uh, the, the Chief Registrar. Let's see right. what we can put a bit of light on, if that's OK. Yeah, absolutely. Keith, just just for our viewers, though, and, and you know, for our listeners out there, um, you've been in the industry a long, long time. I know your history because, you know, I've worked very closely with you over the last few years and with your current position. But yeah. to give uh, an insight into what you do and, and give you really give you some respect there because you aren't somebody who just sits in an office and and signs certificates or whatever. Just give us a little two-minute bio of your background and what you've done over over the course of your career in the hair and uh, beauty industry. Okay, um, just very quickly. um, Yes, you're right, Gary. I've been in the industry a long time. (laughs) Some might say too long, but uh, there we are. Um, Yeah, well, I did an apprenticeship, which is very different to what it is now when I was sort of 16 years of age. Um, Finished that, bought my first business when I was uh, 19 and a half. Um, which I paid the princely sum, I'll never forget it, of £2,850 for, which was a fortune in those days. Kept that for seven or eight years, then moved on, went into manufacturing, um, got involved in a couple of businesses. But um, I suppose when my sort of career really sort of started to climb, um, apart from the manufacturing, I used to run a training centre in Old Bond Street in London for a manufacturer for some years. But I got involved with another guy in the business, which we started in 1986, um, which culminated in us uh, selling in 2010. Um, But my history really is all about hair and beauty. Uh, Our business had 20 stores at the time when we sold. So that was uh, hairdressing, some barbering, not a great deal, to be honest, but mostly hairdressing. Um, Beauty, we had four spas within the, the, the group as well. Um, I ran a very successful government training contract for about 23 years, a direct contract with the government. 
So I had quite a lot of experience of working with the government at that time. Uh, should have learned my lesson, shouldn't I, really? Um, and uh, then in 1996-ish, we got into uh, online retailing. We were arguably the first online retailer of hair and beauty products. Uh, and the company at that time was called Look Fantastic, lookfantastic.com. Um, sold in 2010, stayed with the new company till 2012 to oversee or help with the transition period. Came out in uh, November 2012. Got roped into doing some consultancy work. I didn't really set myself up for it, but you know, people asked me to help them out for I know, raising their Ofsted qualifications and things like that. Um, and that takes us to four and a half years ago when I was approached by the hairdressing council to join to see if we could uh, work together to effect mandatory registration or regulation. So, so my history is all about hairdressing, beauty, barbering, although I have to say, I didn't know as much about barbering as I do now and certainly this job has given me a whole new insight into the barbering world, as you know. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been in it a long time and it's my life, it's my passion. And the only reason I'm doing this job now is because I fervently believe that if this industry was regulated, we would be in a far stronger position than we are now and government would certainly take us a lot more seriously. That's it, just quickly. I'll tell you what, Gary, if you were doing an interview there, we'd actually, I uh, might be a fucking job. Let's, let's sign the bastard up. Hey, by the way, what are you drinking? I've, well, I'm not a beer drinker, because so I've got a nice glass of uh, Malbec, if that's all right. Oh, Malbec's my favourite red wine. You should send me a case whenever uh, you're Alden ready. Gillian. Yeah, well, you can send me a case. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the interview goes first. Cheers, <laughs> Keith, anyway. Good health, mate. Good health. Good oh, health. Nice, nice to have you on the show. I was speaking to Bill earlier today, and he... Uh, he, he, I told him you were coming on today, actually, and he said um, he'd been speaking to you in week. Yeah, we speak about three or four times a week, usually. Good. Yeah. Um, Keith, before we had the lockdown, we're going to talk about that separately. Before yeah. we had that, there was this big petition. Lots of people have been on the show. Like Roberts, <coughs> Jamie Stevens, Errol Douglas. They're all in favour of the VAT cut. Um, can yeah. you give our viewers an update on where we are with that? <laughs> Yeah, certainly. I mean, um, the VAT, VAT has always been a, an issue for our industry, as you know. This is not just in the past sort of year. Um, we've been trying, or at least I've been discussing with government about reducing the VAT rate for, for a long time, well, since I've been in this role, to be honest. Um, it came to a head, I think, when we had the, the lockdown and everything sort of spiralled, because all of a sudden, the hospitality and, and certain industries were given this 5% uh, VAT rate, as opposed to, you know, the, the rate they've been paying. Um where we're at at the moment is that I've been lobbying continually to try and get this reduced. We've written two letters to, well, actually, that's not right. We've written four letters, two to the uh, small business minister, Paul Scully MP, and latterly two letters uh, to Rishi Sunak, the chancellor, with regard to this and the unfairness of it all and, and so on and so forth. Now, interestingly, the last letter that I sent, which was in October, uh, was signed by some some big names in our industry, both uh, some hairdressers, barbers, uh, the big manufacturers that supported it, uh, L'Oreal, uh, Cote, uh, Cow, which is Goldwell, KMS, etc. cetera, uh, some wholesalers. And we got quite a list of, uh, of people, including training provider, uh, sorry, uh, awarding bodies, i.e. VTCT and City and Guilds also uh, supported it. So that went in. One of the things of the four that we asked for was a cut in the VAT rate for this industry. I've since seen there's a petition that's got going uh, about the same thing, of which I've signed and asked everybody else to sign it as well. Um, but at the moment, we're trying to get them to listen to us as to the unfairness of the situation, because I did a webinar with um, uh, the business secretary, I'm trying to think of his name. Anyway, he's the best current business secretary, I'll think of it in a minute. Uh, and I told him the unfairness of the situation. You know, we as an industry have had nothing. All we have had is you know, what everybody else has had, the furlough and, you know, the, if you're self-employed and got your account, you get some help and so on. But we've had nothing at all specifically for our industry. And I've banged the drum continually about the unfairness of it all and uh, given them a list of things we want, i.e. some help towards all the PPE that people have had to pay for. You know, you think people were closed for five months in our industry, Simon, and then they were then landed with all this extra PPE partitions, yeah. you know, everything they had to put in place. So we've asked for a thousand pounds per business for that. Uh, the VAT rate, which I've talked to you about, um, council tax to be revoked for, for at least two years um, to help businesses get started again. Uh, but at the moment, 
I'm afraid we haven't got a definitive answer on any of them. But it ain't for the so, one of trying. So for our viewers that's watching as well, um, how yeah. would they find out about the progress of this? Is they can they click into the Air Council website and is well, there we, information? Well we, can, we, well, we have put, yes, the answer is yes, it's there and I'll put it for public display. So you haven't got to be a member to see it. Um, we'd like Maybe to be we'll members, get, of course. But we'll get Trevor to do a link well, from like, Barber's Arms. So guys, yeah, if you want tonight, um, and obviously it's very important what he's saying tonight about the VAT and uh, obviously about lockdown too, but hopefully we'll get Trevor to to put a link from our website to the Hair Council website so we can keep updated and all the updates that Keith and his team yeah, yeah. are trying to implement. Keith, you mentioned some big companies there, but you didn't mention Wall. I think what we need to do is get a meeting together. Virtually yeah, absolutely. To get and you're, the biggest you're quite clipper, right, Tom. No, the you're quite right, Tom. In the world to be behind everything that you're trying to do, and we'll support you. We'll, 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 you know, we'll, we'll be in association with you and help you wherever we need to do and fund right. things okay, to push that, that, that forward. Right. But yeah, it's no, the biggest great. branded world. We need to be behind it. Great. Well, thank you for that. And I really appreciate it. And that would, would help enormously, I think. I think, I, th I, th I think, Keith, as well, from a, a point of view of industry, I think between us, you know, um, different associations from the BBA, the Hair and Barber, and we work very close with the, with the Hair and Barber Council anyway, and, and different organisations. We, we're trying to, I mean, I love the updates that you do all the time. It's fantastic. People you know, see those on Facebook and Instagram and everything else. We'll get some but, feedback from that, Gary, as well. Yeah, and, you know, keeping people informed is half the battle, isn't it? It takes the... But at the moment... The uh, sorry, at the moment, it's the, it's the main battle because there's so much confusion coming out of Westminster um, and every day I'm battling to get, uh, you know, exact information because, as you know, I won't put anything out unless I'm 100% sure it's accurate. So anything people read that come from us is 100% to the to the point. They may not like it, but that's exactly what it is. Um, because there's been so much fake news and stupid stories going around since this, uh, you know, this pandemic started back in uh, February, March. Um, and I've made it my mission, if you like, to make sure that we keep our members, obviously primarily because they're our members informed, uh, but also industry as well in terms of factual information that can cut through some of the, pardon my word, crap so they can actually get the information they need very quickly or as quickly as I can get it to them. I think, I think on, that, uh, on that point, just give everybody an idea of where they can find the information, how they can get involved with the Hair and Barber Council. Then. Well, I mean, obviously we want, I mean, going back to what uh, Simon just said about, you know, we're not linking with Wall, which we should be, you're, you're dead right, we should be doing that. Um, and I, but I think the, the, one of the big issues we've got, I mean, it's much better than it was, that let's not sort of push it back too far, but the more united our industry is, the more united the voice, the stronger the message, the more chance we've got of getting anywhere we want to get with, with government uh, of the day. Um, so, you know, the more people involved and the more members we've got, then obviously that's, that strengthens what we're doing. It's not just about money. Yes, we need money to run the, the organisation. Of course we do. But we're a not-for-profit organisation. Everything we, we take in goes back into what we're doing and, and running the operation. Um, it's about getting strength of numbers and strength of voice uh, from industry to say that we really want this to happen. Um, so yes, uh, the Hair Council website, it's not the best website in the world, I'm trying to get it changed, which is haircouncil.org.uk. All the information's there. If you'd like to become a member, and we would welcome you enormously, uh, it's just a literally, of, you know, click on the right hand tab that says uh, join now and a few simple steps and we can sort of get the process moving. But uh, information, Sorry. It just asking my question, you're getting lots of people uh, messaging in saying, how do they become registered? And I think there's also another question, what you're going to, what, what I'd like to answer as well is, um, I've got one here from Leeds, is just saying, um, I, I'm qualified hairdresser from 1984, can't find my certificates, but I want to be registered. What do we need to do? Right. I think okay. there's, there's lots, of, we are opening these messages up. There's going to have, there's a lot of people, because I, I know a lot of the faces on these messages, they're going to have to yeah. say, they want to get registered, but the shit's scared of the paperwork right. they're going to have to go through. What, what do they need to do, Keith? Okay, well, basically, if you apply and you haven't got, um, you can't find your qualifications, or some people aren't qualified. You know, they've just been experienced for, you know, 10, 12, 15 years or whatever it is. So we can actually register them, providing we have proof of experience. 
So because they haven't got their certification or they've lost it or they can't get a copy from City and Guilds or whoever, it's not a problem. We can do it another way. But go on, register, see what's what, and then tell us what you have or you haven't got, and we will pick it up and take it from there. Um, at, at the end of the day, we have to have a criteria, Simon, because obviously it's a professional register and we wanted to make sure people are trained, qualified, experienced or, or whatever. Um, so there are a few hoops we have to jump through, but there's not that many um, to get registered. But the other thing is that I'd like to state that not only are they joining our campaign and helping to strengthen everything that we're doing for the industry, this is about industry. It's not about me. It's not about anybody in the office. It's about the industry. Um, and I firmly believe in that. So what they're doing by doing that, they can actually achieve through the Act of Parliament, which we hold. And I think this is quite important for your listeners to, to hear is we're a fairly unusual entity in terms of our status. We're not a limited company. We're not a limited company by guarantee or a charity or anything like that. We're a statutory authority set up by a government act of parliament. And via the act of parliament, we can give state registration to hairdressers and barbers, i.e. state registered hairdressers or state registered barbers, or both if they're involved in both. Um, and they can officially, under the act, use these letters after their name. So for example, yeah. it would be Simon Shaw, SRB, State Registered Barber. Um, so there's quite a- there's a well, quite I have initials out. after my name, it's just SSS, Simon Shaw <laughs> Superstar. I don't need any more fucking initials. Well, yeah, well, that I, one when I finished. Yeah, but, yeah, but the thing is, Simon, you gave that to yourself. Um, <laughs> and? <laughs> you know have you not seen me on stage? What's wrong with you? I have seen you on stage, you're very good, but I'm not going to make your head any bigger. Um, no, but seriously, um, so, but officially, because somebody came through once to me, I don't know, a year back, and said, well, who are you to say people who use letters after their name? And it's quite simple, it's not through me, it's through the, the Act of Parliament that designates that people that register on the professional register can officially use letters after their name. I think it's absolutely amazing. I'm, I'm going to say from both me, I mean, Gaz, you're, all your staff are state registered, aren't they? I, I, I've got, I can't say I, I enough to everybody is to get state registered, whether you're a bab or an editor, you need to click in and get onto their website and, and do what you've got to do to get state registered. Like you just said, it's not a lot of money and it, and it just elevates you up a different level. And it helps, it really does strengthen what we're doing, Simon. That's For me, that's the most important thing. As long as I've yeah. got enough money to pay the rent and the rates or whatever it is, that's the money I need to run the operation. Beyond that, it's really about having the strength of the industry behind us and to speak with one voice, which we desperately need to do, or as much as we can. It's all gone quiet. Yeah, you're muted, Gus. We've, we've actually named this episode Strength in Numbers. Sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> my, my iPad is playing up. But um, Strength in Numbers, and. I know we've been into Parliament quite a few times and it's quite apt because uh, Movember's here. We've even shaved yeah. MPs in there in the salon yeah. in, actual, in the actual Parliament as well. But I think it, I think it's, you know, apt to say and let people know. I mean, we've got the numbers that we've got within the industry. Government will not take us serious if we can't attract numbers into our own trade association, can we? I mean, yeah. they they yeah. want us to they want us to get voluntarily, um, you know, seventy five percent of the industry into um, state registration before they even take a look at us. Really, even though we are lobbying very hard to get in there, but I think you know, if people realise it's not about the money, it's about having that name on that piece of paper and being able to go in front of MPs, you know, SC MPs, whoever it is, you know, the Prime Minister yeah. even and say, this is how strongly we feel. This is how our members feel. We aren't a profession. We are a profession. We're a professional profession, but we need the numbers to prove that we're all behind the cause. Yeah, I mean, you're quite right, Gary. Um, and we've come a long way in the past four years, not least for my efforts, but a lot of other people's efforts as well. But, you know, all this will help. Uh, and as I said just now, every penny, apart from obviously just paying the, the, the daily bills, goes into the campaign and whatever we do. We have a political communications company, as you know, Gary, that work very closely with us. In fact, I had a, an hour webinar with them today about how we can infiltrate to a much more positive um, 
sphere. I mean, you've got to take on board that we've got Brexit and got a pandemic going on. So, you know, I'm afraid any industry specifically is probably not the top of their list at the moment. They've got so many other things to worry about. But we have to keep this up because, you know, we will Brexit will happen. And please God, the pandemic will end sooner rather than later. But um, I think the pandemic has been a bit of a wake up call for us all, to be honest, in many ways, uh, in terms yeah. of how clients value us as an industry. And I actually had a, a, a conversation with the department today when they said, do you believe you're an essential service? I said, absolutely, I think we're an essential service. You know, because at the end of the day, it's about well-being, it's about mental health, it's about loneliness, it's about contact with people. Um, you know, all the feel-good factors that we give to the industry, you know, being hairdressing, barbering, or beauty, it doesn't matter. So for me, absolutely, I think it's an essential service. The, the, the thing going on to that as well, Go on, sorry, Gary. I was just going to say, Keith, you know, we, we've had the numbers from Sage that's actually backed that up as well, you know, that we are not yeah. a spreader of the virus. You no, know, we it's 0.05 or, or, or um, you know, what not. we are. Yeah, uh, that's right. Um, interestingly, how that came about, because I've been lobbying to get these figures for about six weeks now, and this was before we knew there was going to be a, um, you know, a, a lockdown because I hope there wouldn't be, how wrong was I? But when they were talking about the regional lockdowns, I mean, take Liverpool, for example, uh, when they went into tier three, um, I was very concerned because at that point, they said hairdressers and barbers and that could stay open, if you remember, in tier three. But I was very concerned because the local authorities throughout the country all had the, uh, the power, if you like, to override that and close our industry if they felt that the infection rates were being increased by hairdressing, barbering, or, or beauty. And I was very- Keith, what is it about the industry that you love so much that you are trying so hard to lobby and to, to basically, you know, you keep trying to improve it. What is it that you love about this industry? You got, um, well, the people, for one. I think we're a great people uh, uh, industry. Um, I believe we, we give one of the best services you can get um, out on the streets in terms of, as I said, well-being and all the rest of it. It's been a good industry to me, Simon. You know, I've had to work hard. You don't get out for now. But, you know, it's been a damn good industry to me. And I feel very passionately that we're not regarded in the same status as other professions. And that's been with me for many years. That's not something that's uh, sort of materialised over the past few years. You know, I've never felt that we get the recognition we deserve and certainly the support, which has become even more apparent because of this pandemic. And as I say, that's why I lobbied to get these figures because I, I mean, thank God I was right, but I could have been wrong, but I had a feeling that we weren't responsible. And not only are we not responsible for the rise in the infection rates, neither is non-essential retail in whatever guise you'd like that to, to call that. So well, my, my argument is why are we being shut down for something we're not contributing to and the other thing i'm sorry to go on about this but i feel strongly about this when we went into uh, came out of lockdown on july the 4th everybody in the industry all right there's a few rogue ones you're always going to get that but everybody in the industry put their heart and soul into you know making sure their salons were covid secure with all the ppe the partitioning you know the hygiene the sanitizers everything they really worked hard so you have to ask yourself if that's not good enough what else can we do do you know what, Keith? Uh, earlier on, Simon asked me, what did I say to my staff as, as we locked the door for the second time? And we had, a, we, you know, we all stayed over and had a cup of tea, as you can imagine, uh, after we finished work. And, um, you know, we listed, they, they, they were asking me, are we allowed to take a second job? Are we doing this? And they were saying, I've lost you. Job for 10, 12, 13 pound an hour. And I'm like, just do not sell you. I said, how ridiculous is it for us as an industry when you have all the attributes that we have to, we have to be great communicators. We have to be great with the job. We have to look right. We have to be creative. We have to be business owners. We have to take money. All these attributes that we have as an industry. These skills you know, aren't recognised, Gary, by these we, people. We, we, we should be being paid an absolute fortune and we're not valued by the public, I think, sometimes or anybody else. You know, when you go for a job or, you know, what, you actually train people to do that. They, you, you teach them to do that. I'm like, are you, are, you, are you for real? I can kill them, honestly. I can, oh, you just cut a bit of head of them. 
he he absolutely crucifies me every time, you know. And I've said, don't let anybody ever put you down and, and, and you know, treat you like any any other person. So I'm glad to hear that, that we're pushing that, that message. Do you know one yeah. thing, though, Keith? One of the messages, I spoke to a pal today and he said, oh, you got on the show tonight? And I said, oh, oh we got on the show tonight. And he said a few choice words, like, time to get that finger out. Why are we being shut down again? Um... <laughs> Hopefully, tell us how to support the campaign. I don't need to even answer that question now. We've seen the passion is with us 100. percent We don't. We we can't lobby in the same way as what Keith can in his position. And you know, uh, if anybody's watching this tonight, or, or you're going to watch it in the week, you'll know. I think you'll be a little bit more rest assured that we've got somebody who is really fighting at that level for us in the government. Also passionate, more passionate than I thought he were about this industry. He's been in this for a long time. So, Keith, 50, I think one of the things that's come out from that tonight, one of the things that's come out, I don't even need to answer that question, like pull your finger out. A lot of people saying, why have we been shut down again? But listen, you, you're hearing it. You're seeing it as I am. I don't even need to ask him a question. He's going to do everything he can to get us where we need to be, whether that's the VAT, whether that's the bastard shutting, keep shutting you down. He's going to do everything he can. He knows what he's on with, and he's going to be in a lot better position than what we will be. We're pine, and we want to just oh, Boris is a dick and stuff. It needs to be done properly. Yeah, it does. Uh, but I need I need people's support. I cannot do it on my own. Yes, I can do a lot on my own, but I need the backing and the strength of the industry behind me. That is critical. Absolutely critical. Well, let's do it. We want to get behind you at walls. So we need to have a conversation in week about what we can do to get uh, some support behind you. Um, but we'll do everything in our power to, to do That'd that. Be great. I, I really welcome that. Thank you. Hey, can, Gabby, um, anything? Be, before you go, oh, Keith, can I just be, uh, quite a few of our members? I'm have to go, but I'm sure you'll want to get rid of me. So, no, no, just before you go, we, you know, obviously we need strength in numbers, but also we just need a few bits and bobs clarifying because education okay. is still um, available, isn't it, within right. the industry? Okay. As, long yeah. not, as long as they're not working on live heads. Um, apprentices and education can still go because colleges and universities are still working, aren't they? Okay, um, you're quite right. Uh, Boris announced that uh, schools, colleges, and university could stay open, but of course, he didn't mention any other training facilities or any education. Anyway, again, I've spent a lot of time this week getting this, this clarified because even the department didn't know the detail when I asked them. Um, so, anyway, the situation is now that uh, training or education establishments within the industry, you're quite right, can remain open. Um, so private training providers, um, like if you had a, I don't know, three or four barbershops, you had a separate, I under, you know, underlie the word separate training facility, uh, like a, a school separately or upstairs separately or something like that, that can remain open. There is a, a slight caveat um, with, um, oh, the other thing is that, um, uh, manufacturers training schools can stay open, Weller, L'Oreal, their facilities can stay open as well. Um, so if people go into the Weller studio, for example, that can stay open. Yes, it has to be on live models, but there is a, a question mark, which I'm not comfortable with, that they're saying you can't use, obviously lose, use clients uh, for practicing, but you can use each other as students, which I'm not totally comfortable question with. Question here, Keith. Question just come in. Yeah. Uh, Lafab in Leeds is saying, we're a private uh, training provider, but come on, fund the training, private training. Um, yeah. We're using mannequins for uh, models uh, for yeah. demonstrations, but yeah. our students, because they're in a student bubble, are they allowed to work on each other's air? We've been told that they are. Yes, they are. Um, I, 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 I don't quite see that. It is because it's a bubble, I suppose, but that bubble can be quite large in a, in a student facility. But the answer is, under the guidance, yes, they can. Or, or on or on blockheads, obviously. I mean, I mean, it's it's quite unbelievable. I, you know, I know. I wasn't, they, I wasn't totally comfortable with that when they first said it because I thought, well, if they're working on each other, and, yeah, what's that? I suppose it's because they're all together every week. I don't know, but um, anyway, that you're quite right, Simon. That is true. Hey, that, Gaz, I, I weren't going to put him through the drill, but I think he's deserved it. <laughs> what's that? I'm well, if you've watched sure Barbara's Arms, either. every guest that we have on, our, our main guests, we put them through a quick fire question grill to build a profile up. Oh I'll tell you what God. tonight, and I'll tell you what tonight, I've got to say, 
Um, obviously, it was a bad week last week in the industry. We lost a few of our friends. I know you we did. We cancelled last week's show out of respect for them that and the families. And, yeah. um, you know, coming out then at lockdown two, you know, this week was always going to be a little bit different. And when Gaz said they were going to fetch you on, I thought, you know, the production team thought this would be really good. Um, you've lifted my spirits tonight that I know that we've got somebody inside that government area who's going to really lobby and do the right thing for this industry. So, first of all, thank you for that. Well, thank Secondly, you for we need to get on. together next week for a call for what we can do at Wall to support you and help you with that. Well, you've got um, all my details now. Trevor's got them all, so you've got them. Good. And, um, you know, I think for all our viewers that's going to watch, especially UK viewers, do you not feel more confident now with what we've just listened to? Do you not feel more confident that somebody's there going to really, like, go say what you want to say, but do it in a proper way? He's passionate. He knows the industry. He's been in it around a long time. Can so, I just say one thing before we close? Can yeah. I just say one thing before we close? It's quite important because a lot of people don't realise this. I'm lobbying to get this industry regulated, as you know. Now, once it's regulated, it won't be me, and it certainly won't be the government that's running our industry. It'll be industry that's running our industry. And that's really important to understand because a lot of people are concerned that if we become regulated, uh, it all gets a bit official and we have government, big brother, running our industry. No, absolutely not. Industry will be running industry for itself. Who wants to get <laughs> registered? <laughs> Do you know what, though? I think, I think that was a really, really poignant piece there as well, because a lot of people think we, we, we're there with a big stick and we want to just get everybody in line. Of course we want to raise the standard. Of course we want to raise, you know, the, exactly. the, the professionalism of, of our industry. But a lot of people just think we're, we're there for all the wrong reasons. And let me say, um, you know, all the people that are involved who sit on the committee, on the, on the council for the hair and the barber council, it's all voluntary. Nobody gets paid anything. Nobody gets, an expense. Nobody gets anything. We do it because we want to be there. And simple and simply as that. And, you know, I can't, I can't actually, um, you know, people actually ask me, well, how are you going to implement that? We've got it all in place, Keith, as well, haven't we? You know? Yeah, we've got a consultation document ready to go for industry, as you know. Um, you know, we're, we've gone as far as we can at the moment. Let's put it that way. The more strength we've got, the better chance we've got, and that's it. Well, I, I can remember going years ago a few times in my early career dimensions with Bill and Bird. I went to, uh, I got invited to Queen's Garden party once, went to House of Commons once. I'm a bit older now, so I think once we get involved with all this stuff as well, we want to get down to House of Commons when it's all back to normal, guys. Me and you get absolutely bollocks. We've got a few <laughs> MPs there that's pissed us off. Matt Hancock, sit here, son. Get it on YouTube. <laughs> Let's have it. Keith, we're going to finish off with quick profile, quick five questions, get a little profile of Keith Coniford, the main man. Keith, what's your favourite food? What's my favourite what? Food. Italian. Italian. What's your favourite drink? Wine, I have to say. Red wine in Malbec. particular. Uh, Malbec. Malbec, but any red wine, really. Well, Malbec's beautiful. What's yeah. your favourite music? What do you like to listen to in your... On your eye, you know. Um, well, dare I say I love classical music, but uh, pretty middle of the road, to be honest. The only thing I don't like is heavy rock. I'm not into heavy rock. But anything else, pretty much. Where's your favourite destination? India. Surprising? No, no. Do you know what? The really quick thing. It's like you've, we've asked you these before. <laughs> it, it, it just, oh, where was it? I missed it. Where was it? India. India. I love India, yeah. It's not surprising. I love it. Now, we'd normally say, who's your ideal dinner date? But I'm going to change it slightly for you on this one. Who would be your ideal politician dinner date? Live or dead? Don't matter. You tell us who. I'd love to have had dinner with Margaret Thatcher. I knew you were going to say that. So when you said dead. To... Okay. Um, more, Listen, more recently, I think it's been a great um, answer. It's been a great insight to have uh, Keith uh, Coniford, the Chief Registrar for the Hair and Barbering Council. I've been really motivated by what I've heard tonight. I feel a little bit more confident in that we've got the right man at the right position to, uh, to do the lobbying that we need to do. Guys, if you're not registered um, as a registered address, so get those initials behind your name um, and it's time to, to step this industry up. And this is one of the little chinks in that industry stepping up. Get yourself registered. Keith Coniford sat having an Italian meal, 
drinking his favourite Malbec wine. <laughs> he's listening to some beautiful classical music in some beautiful Mumbai restaurant in India, his favourite destination. And he's doing all this with the late Margaret Thatcher. Keith Coniford, <laughs> thanks for being on Barber's Arms. Thank you, you for having me, Simon. Yes. Keith Coniford, ladies thanks and gentlemen. Thanks a lot, Gary. Nice to see you guys. Thanks very much indeed. Keith, thanks very much for giving us your time, sir. You're a no legend. Problem, thanks mate. very I'll much. Speak to you later. Okay, Thank cheers. You. Well Bye. done, Keith. Great interview. Brilliant. Brilliant. Lifted the mood. Lifted the mood of the country, I think, there a little bit. Great guest um, coming in um, at the notice of we need to change this show around. Um, I, I thought it was superb. He speaks really well. I mean, he fucking speaks for England, to be fair to him, but um, he was fantastic, Gary. I mean, really good. He knows the industry inside out. That was why he got the job in the first place as registrar. Um, got a lot of votes off a lot of people, including Bill, you know, who was instrumental in bringing him on board. And... You know, he's got the credentials to do the job. Um, he's at that time of his life as well where he can he can give that. He, he's done his bit. He's, he's run his businesses. He's been there, done it, had the T-shirt. But also, he can give a little back, a little bit back as well. But I've worked with Keith, for, like he's just said, for the last four and a half years. And, you know, he's a lovely fella. But he's also... It's, you know yourself. It's all about the little black book, isn't it? But it's, it's about networking. It's about... It's about getting people on side, but I think in the especially in the last couple of years, or, or especially the last, not particularly this last twelve months, because it's been a very hard year. But running up to COVID, we were making great progress for the barber uh, council and the hair council cause to get mandatory registration. And I think I think what it what it gave us as well is we we did a piece of work or and. You know, there's a lot of people instrumental in this about getting um, the facts and figures to the to, to government about how much the, the actual industry was worth to the, the economy. And I think it, it's re they've realised or the pennies dropped that you can actually do that. So lovely phallic, on course, everybody giving you support if you possibly can. And hopefully we can make a change. That's the thing. And when oh. things like, when things like this happen, this is when we realise we should be registered. We should be we should be focused, yeah. and the government should should be able to come to us as one. Yeah. Group. Be nice to have a charge like surcharge on you if you stay registered at uh, Barbara or Edison. Your prices can be dearer than everybody else's. That'd be even better. And insurance companies will do your public liability insurance that you were cheaper if you were state registered, if you weren't state registered. Those kind of things, I think, need to be part of the, part of that deal. Gaz, it's cocktail time. What have you wow. talking about tonight? Just before you say that, those are the benefits to being state registered. You do get cheaper insurance. You do get things that, you know, you get the magazine. So there is things there as well. But I will say, I'm not very happy with the insurance companies at the moment because the business interruption from an employee's point of view it's toss at the moment, so I'll, that's another. That's that's one more for another another show, though. So today, I got I got quite a few options. Last week it was all set in place because it was Halloween. Um, last night it's bonfire night. Um, I, I got this Halloween cocktail set, and it was perfect. And not only have we lost San Antonio and, and different uh, celebrities and great people within the industry. But we've lost 007 this week as well, haven't we? Mm. One of my favourite ones. Mr. Sean Connery, we have lost him. So I was getting to a mark, you know, shake and not stir, martini, dry martini, but anyway, I aren't doing anything. I'm going to shake it and stir it while you're doing that. All right then, cheers, mate. So what we're doing is we're doing a Bloody Mary. So it's, it's, a, it's a, a wintery drink, I think. Um, but we're doing a Bloody Mary with a twist. So we've got a little bit of ice. We've got our shaker. So, and this is fresh ice out of the fridge. It isn't wet, it's dry ice. So a lot of people, what's the difference? Well, if you have wet ice, it kind of dilutes. You've got to have dry ice, fresh ice straight out of the freezer. So we've got our, our shaker here. So to do a Bloody Mary. Now a Bloody Mary, everybody knows a Bloody Mary. It's vodka, some water juice, but we're going to add a few little different ingredients. And the only reason I'm doing that is because 
This is Rachel, one of my, uh, uh, I love this drink, but Rachel loves it even more. So I'm making this for Rachel. So I'm not going to do it. I'm going to make two because I'm going to give Rachel one at the same time. Drink, by the way. So Bloody Mary, we've got vodka. So we've got a nice premium vodka. So we're going to have, and we're going to do two. So I'm going to slosh this in. We're going to straight into there with some ice. So we're going to go in there. And the main ingredient, which is the tomato juice. Now you can use a really thick tomato juice. It's great. You like keep that viscosity so it's quite thick. But when I was in America, you know, working a lot, they love this particular tomato juice. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you in a minute what that is. So what we're going to do is we need a little bit of sweetness. So we're going to have these, this agave nectar. So it's just a little bit of sweetness in there. And it's really, the history of Bloody Mary is, you know, the, these drinks were made and it's this sweet, sour, you know, this um, salt and peppery kind of drink. So it's really great. So, and we just, this is going to be a different one. So we're just going to slurp these in. But a little bit of great sherry. This is, comes from all the way from Spain. Obviously, sherry does, but this is the region where we've got a house. So a little glug of that in there as well. So we've got our sherry in there. We've got uh, some Tabasco sauce. A little bit of that. And our Worcester sauce. So we're going to have a little glug of that. And I really like this. So I'll put another glug in there as well. So we've got a pinch of salt as well. So we put that in there, some celery salt. And the thing is, we've got some lemon juice. Now, the lemon juice, not a lot of people put this in, but I, I really like this. So we've got uh, like half a measure of lemon juice. If you're going to use a jigger, you know what, you, what they use in a pub? So you can use jigger. So that's a half, that's a one measure. That's a double measure. So I use shot glasses, so it's easier to sort out. So, but if you use a jigger, it's a full measure of vodka. And it's half a measure of uh, lemon juice. So on top of that now, we've already put the sherry in there. We've got to add. Now, you can use a tomato juice, which is like this. So you've got Big Tom, something like that. This is a brand name, I know, but it's a spiced tomato. But what we're using today is we're using Clamato. Now, this is something we picked up in America. It's absolutely lovely. And they use it in loads and loads of drinks. And I was in uh, working in Texas, and they've got a drink there that they actually mix this with beer as well, as well as all the Bloody Mary ingredients as well. And it's called a Michelada. Now, it's a beautiful drink. And if, if, uh, if there's a young man in Canada watching this, he'll know exactly what I'm on about. So what we're going to do is this clamato, it's tomato juice and clam broth with all different spices. I and mean, that sounds quite disgusting, but I love clams anyway. So we're going to put two portions of this in. It's is it alcoholic? No, it's not alcoholic. It, it's tomato juice with spices, but it's got clam broth. You know, when clams are boiled down, it's got the broth. Oh, it's be honestly, mate, it's beautiful. Have you never been in America and had this? When you've been in America and had a bloody yeah, Mary? Yeah, probably seen it, but... No, I do. Honestly, and they actually mix it with beer. It's called a. You've just missed it. It's called a Michelado, where they mix it with beer. It, it's lovely, anyway. Anyway, so we've got our top on, and we just we don't smash this about because all we want to do is cool the actual liquor inside there. We're not smashing it about. We just want to cool it really. So about twenty times, just to and fro. Not too much. We're going to put some, you can see where it is there. We're going to put some ice in another glass, in two glasses, highball glasses. I'm going to make two here because this is Rachel's drink, really. This is, this is her best, you know, she loves it. She said, if you make one of them tonight, you better make me one because it's uh, her favourite drink. She loves, she's not, not a great, great fan of vodka. But she actually loves a Bloody Mary. So, what we're going to do, oh, do you know what I haven't done? I'm going to have to tip this out. I'm going to just have to, uh, and go. I'm just going to have to, I'm going to rim the glass for you. So, this is lemon juice here, 
and then we've got salt and pepper there. So can you see we re rim the glass? So put the put that back in. Miss, I missed that, sorry. Got ahead of myself there. So rim the glass again, put it in the salt and pepper. Celery, salt and pepper. So you can see it, it's on the rim there. Oh, beautiful, like jeweled. Put that back in there. You'll be down in a minute. You'll hear the door go in a minute because she's watching this upstairs and she'll come down and actually see this. So we're going to strain this. <laughs> we're not going to tip the ice in there. We're going to just push that in. She's going to get that on the top with just a little bit of Worcester just on the top there. And, of course, you've got to have the obligatory celery. So that goes in there. Just give it a little twirl. That's going to go in. And then we've got some Spanish olives that are stuffed. Can you, uh, can you see them? And a cherry on the top. So we're just going to push that. I'm going to give that. That's, that's Rachel's. That's where uh, Rachel's is going to sit. And then obviously there's mine that I'm going to drink for you, Simon. So good health, everybody. Bloody good health, Mary. guys. You deserve to. It looks lush. Ah, <laughs> oh, sound effects are fantastic. Meow. Did you hear the sound effects? <laughs> Absolutely beautiful, mate. Absolutely. You, I, I wish you were here because I'd met you one. We'd be drinking them all night, honestly. Beautiful. Beautiful. What you she's here. God, let me just just let them see you wet your hand, take it. Oh, she's there. Come down and add it. The only trouble is, I put the garnish in. She hates celery, but she loves the drink. Yeah, I'm not a celery fan, Rachel, neither. So I, I, I'd give the celery a miss, but uh, it looked very lush. Guys, coming up to our uh, our Christmas uh, weekend that we're hopefully going to have in December, there's not going to be anybody um, doing any Christmas parties and things like that, unfortunately, this year. But hopefully we can do the next best thing, fetching your five top cocktails. So, guys, don't forget to... Uh, Send us in your messages either on our Instagram, which is Simon Shaw Wall, Gary the British Barber, or Barbers underscore arms Instagrammers, and let us know what your five favourite Gazza's cocktails have been over the last 29 weeks or 30 weeks, or by the time we get to Christmas, maybe 40 weeks, what your favourite cocktails have been of Gaz. Email us as well at thebarbersarms.co.uk. Um, just, um, sorry, that's our website, but barbersarms at britishbarber.com as well if you want to uh, email us as well um, we started something new at Barber's Arms which is a Daily Arms blog, I did my first one today, I think we've had about two and a half thousand views of that so far so thank you for everybody who's tuned into that, just little snippets from me and Gaz every day, it's Gaz's turn tomorrow morning after all these cocktails <laughs> and he's got to do it before the clock strikes 12 at midday so it's got to be a morning <laughs> blog so I'm looking. I can't wait for that myself to see uh, what the Mitch Meister's like on a Saturday morning. Because do you know what? On the group as well, you're the last to reply sometimes on a Saturday morning. We are all up nice and bright and sparkling and doing. It. I know you're normally working, but sometimes you don't get back to us till um, uh, you know uh, four, five o'clock in the afternoon. You've got to get it in by eleven. The production team just said he's got to have it in by eleven a.m. So, Rachel, I know you're listening. Make sure tonight when we finish, he gets his vlog ready for tomorrow morning to do it. Guys, moving on as we're moving on, and I thought Keith were fantastic tonight. Lots of people uh, coming in with like really positive comments on that, so that's been fantastic as well. Uh, we've had a message as well from somebody uh, saying, um, can we have a word with all our celebrity barbers who cut Premier League footballers' airs? Um, to make sure that you do the right thing this time as well. And, uh, you know, I don't know what the rules are. We're not, we're not supposed to be cutting air. You're not supposed to cut in air and take your money for it. You're not supposed to be going out and cutting air. We've heard of Keith Coniford tonight that it's only in a training environment. You're able to do mannequins as models, at demonstrations, but um, the, the students can do each other's airs. But, you know, from going out and cutting air, cutting people's air outside, and I think cutting airs in football clubs and stuff like that, again, is one of them things that would fall in that very, very grey area that you shouldn't be doing it. Um, some of our viewers tonight are asking, can we please just make sure 
um, you know, the kind of don't do it. The lot of people say we've 27 days from today, uh, 26 tomorrow. Um, so, you know, um, we're just going to do the right thing. Um, all our friends in America as well. Wow, the election. I've do you know what? It could be. It could be worse. We could be living in America at the moment. I've well, got a lot. Of, I mean, all all our American friends out. Are, are, well, not just American. All our North American friends out there that this will impact on their lives and livelihood and everything else. What madness, isn't it? You can I mean, you've worked over there. I've worked over there such a lot during elections as well. People get so passionate. I don't know if it's how much money you've got or. You know how much how much you pull it. I, I, I'm not quite sure how it works. The, the system is so different than ours. Um, we, but, don't, we don't know ins and outs, and neither does Trump. Neither, um, so it would be from for anybody to comment on wh whether things are uh, fraudulent or not. But um, I'm a Yorkshireman, and when you go into things like that, um, I think the word I always look for is like, "Don't be a bad loser." Um, yeah. If you've lost lost and go out gracefully um, we don't know all ins and outs but it, it certainly looks a precarious situation out there for everybody and uh, God speed to everybody out in America stay safe everybody out there it's as bad out there as it is here um, you, you're not too far away in different states from different lockdowns so I think just do the right thing patience, calmness hopefully that they can resolve this in the next couple of weeks and uh, Godspeed to all our American colleagues out there. Guys, what I want to talk about as we're finishing off tonight is just a few things that we can help people with um, just over this next uh, 20, 26, 27 days that you've got left before you get back. Um, a lot of people have said to me, do you think that he's going to keep us locked down after the second? Well, first time round, bear in mind, he just said there were no dates given. And then when he introduced the second phase of the first lockdown, the, the, there were no assurance. It was only the third announcement. They said uh, hairdressers and barbers could go back on the 4th of July. But right from the get-go here, he said 2nd of December. Um, well, it's actually midnight of the 2nd of December, so don't forget that. You're actually open on the 3rd of December. So don't be booking clients in on 2nd of December. It's actually midnight of the 2nd of December that this ban... Uh, this lockdown finishes. So you, you can open up at midnight on the 2nd, which some of you did on the 3rd or stroke 4th of July. Um, so just bear that in mind as well. But uh, guys, one of the things that I've wanted to talk about is things that um, are going to help people through this next uh, period. Um, and I think one of the difficult things is sometimes when we talk about TV and stuff like that, it's like, there's so much more to do, but I think people are knackered. They've really busted the guts over the last three or four months, especially the last three or four days. So nice time to get back to some box sets. Um, and, and I think um, a, a couple of things I've been watching, a couple of recommendations that I've said is, I watched something called Life, which is really good. It's uh, six episodes. Um, I think it was a, a BBC or an ITV programme, but that's really good. Um, I don't know if anybody watched the, the programme called Sisters. Very spooky. If you watch it on your own, if you're like me, I have to turn light on. I'm not into horror movies or horror things, but you watch parts of it, it gives you all them goosebumps when you're watching it. Um, so those are a couple of things that I think if you get a chance over the next couple of weeks, watch Life and watch Sisters. That they're, they're two good things. And then, Gary, I was talking, I'll, I want you to go through, what's your, what's your, have a think about it, but what's your favourite three films of all time? And it might be nice sometimes to, when you watch your favourite films of all time, it's nice to go back to watch them, even though you might watch them a few times. But it takes you back to that time as well when you first watched them, and it can get you in a kind of good mood as well. You see, I, I'm, I'm terrible. I, I'm, uh, I'm one of them guys who, if I, I, don't, I don't take... Well, well, this last two, three weeks, I haven't watched any telly at all. Um, but, well, straight from work, I, I've been getting straight back, to be honest. I'm getting too old for this stuff, but um, we've been so busy. Because we had half term, didn't we, the week before? So we were so busy that week as well. I, I just go straight back. Rachel thinks I'm a grumpy old man, to be honest. I come here and eat my tea, 
strip off at the wash you. Put all me whoa, 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 whoa. Put all me COVID clothes in the in the washer. She washes them and I go straight to bed. I'm, I'm like, she nudges me with a cup of tea about 10 o'clock and says, you know. Cup of tea? Yeah, I love a cup of tea, I do. Anyway. I like so, a cup of tea, but it's surprising hearing that you have a cup of tea when you come in at that time, not a beer or something like that. Well, you know, getting old, aren't I? Anyway, so I, I'm, I'm terrible. I'm a, a man of habit. I, am. I, I like re-watching stuff and... Uh, if, if I think, you know, unless somebody actually says to me, oh, you really need to watch this, I won't take a punt on watching something. It's like two hours of my life I might, you know, lose. So I'll like, oh, uh, Saving Private Ryan's on, I'll watch that again. You know what I mean? That type of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I think as we get older, we're all a bit like that. I, 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 I listen to my son a lot and he tells me lots of stuff to watch um, and uh, good um, things. Well, what's your favourite three films of all time, Gary? Um, do you know what? I, I like, I like, um, I think in another life, I would have either gone in the army or I would have been in um, all my mates, all my mates from when we left school. My best mate went in the Royal Engineers. My other best mate went in the RAF. And my other best mate went to university to be in a... In a Electrical engineer turned out to be a really mega designer. Bloody bloody blah. What happened to and you I, then? And I went and I went work. You know, I, I earned money straight from when I was fifteen. And um, so you know, I, I do like a military true story. If, if so what's your favorite free, What's your favorite free, free films? Then let's list them. Uh, I like David Private Ryan. Uh, I think I think that's a great film. I, I love it. It's uh, it's great. Great, great film. Matt Damon. Sorry? Matt Damon. Saving Private Ryan. No, it's um, it's uh, the, the main... Well, Matt Damon's in it, but he isn't the main character, is he? he no. But, uh, yeah, it is Matt yeah. Damon, yeah. Uh, I do like I do like a, a historical drama, so, you know, the, it, it might be um, something like... Um, I don't know. Mm, Mal Gibson, you know, as a, as a Scotsman. I, he always, you know, whenever, whenever I see that, when I ever see Mal Gibson in a kilt. When Braveheart. He, when he, yeah, when Braveheart. When, I always think of Ross, Mr. Big Ross up, up in Scotland. Like, I just think uh, all Scotsmen years ago must have looked just like, must have just looked like Ross. With a kilt on, with no pants, and it's all flailing around, and they're charging the, the English like kind of thing. So I quite like Braveheart and uh, uh, Quadrophenia. Quadrophenia is a good one. I like, I like, I like Quadrophenia, actually. Um, I could go on and on, really. I, I'm, I'm quite, I quite like. I like all the James Bond films, a bit, a bit escapism, and it, like you know. But I, I, I do like uh, factual. I, I like uh, factual stuff. I do. I don't watch a lot of fictional stuff anymore. I, I do like um, my lady. You know what my lady says? Years ago, you know, when you when the kids were young and you wanted the kids, because I was terrible, you know, for not sending the kids bed, really. And my lady says, uh, you know, she'd look to watch and say, it's time for bed, isn't it? And I'm going, yeah, yeah. So you put some of crap on the tally and they, they all, ah, I'm going to bed now, like, you know, put, you know, the history of, uh, you know, gardening or something like that. They go, right, Dad, I'm going to bed now. Thanks. She says, I do that to Rach now. She, said, <laughs> she says, you turn me into one of the kids. When you want me to go to bed, you put some of crap on the tally. <laughs> so... It's, you know, it's spoiling I, everybody's tactics there, you see. Every, every every female that's listening with a partner now will be saying, you do that to me as well. You put some shit on telly, so I'll go to bed <laughs> and watch my iPad or watch something upstairs because you want to watch that on your own. Do you know what? I, I was thinking today about my favourite stuff and I, I, will, I will try to look at all our viewers and we've got a lot of football fans who are barbers as well. I watched a great documentary a few months ago and I've watched it a few times since, which... I hate the bastard for what he did to England in Mexico 86, but the Maradona documentary, his biography is brilliant to watch. Yeah. Uh, I love, for me, my go to feeling, the music, the films to the ends of the films, the training sequels, 
all the Rocky trilogies for me are a massive uplifting feeling. If you're feeling a bit down over the next few weeks, you think, what am I going to do today? Stick a Rocky movie on, stick Rocky 2 on, and watch him when, he, when she tears. I just want you to do one thing, which is win. Watch hey, him yeah. Watch him win. yeah, watch it. It gives me goosebumps now even watch it. It's all the Rocky trilogies. But from a real film point of view, where I could watch again and again and again, would be Jaws, the first one, uh, Robert Shaw, uh, uh, what is it, Rob Schneider, uh, yeah. Richard Dreyfus were in that, 1976. I actually went to the pictures with my mum and my grandparents to watch that in Blackpool um, when, it, when it first came out. So I actually wore, I'm showing my age now, but I went to the pictures at six year old to watch that. Um, and it was a really hot summer as well, 1976, you remember? I didn't go in fucking see at all. Uh, I was scared shitless in case a scow, a, a shout were going to get me. Um, and another fan, I'm, I'm, I love gangster movies as well, but I, I can't get past Goodfellas. I think that's a, an amazing film. If you just want to watch it, if you've not watched it, watch it. If you watched it, watch it again. It's, it's just good about that. And um, the other one that I love as well, because the ending of it for me is a real love, not love story, but I kind of like, oh, I'd love to do that to somebody. You know, it's obviously a gentleman. Um, when, you know, if you watch, just Google it tonight, guys, or when you, when you watch this, just, just put in Office and Gentleman, the end scene. And it's, um, what, who, who sings it? Uh, uh, Joe Cocker. And yeah. lifts it up when he walks in and picks her up a factory. Wow, it gives me goosebumps watching it. And it's always one of them where you're sat on your own or you're listening to music in a car and you think, I'm going to be better. I'm going to do something better to that. I'm going to I feel look do, up, I feel different. Do, do, you know, do you know what, though? It's funny, isn't it? You know, we get to a certain age. I love John Wayne. You know, <laughs> stuff like all, all, all the Western. If, if I could be something else in another life, I'd love to be a cowboy. I, I, I love horses anyway. Always rode horses as a kid, like or whatever. But I'd love. I'd, I'd, I've even said. I've even said to Rachel. I said, you know, we've got to go to Texas. We worked in. Te I've worked all over Texas. Love Texas, and I'd love to go on a on a. You know, like uh, what what's that film called where they go? City on, Slickers. Like, City Slickers. All, all of us have got to do that. Honestly. We've all got it. When this, when this stops, we've all got to go. Right. All the production team, everybody. I know Jackie knows Texas very well, but when, when, you, go, when you go out there, you get this feeling. Rachel's um, cousin, he was a cowboy for about four years, and honestly, it, it's so... That type of life, that, you know, that, it, it just does it for me. But cowboy-wise, you know, like... Uh, all the old one, all the old uh, film stars, westerns. I could watch them and watch them and watch them. Paint your uh, wagon. You are sorry. Paint your wagon. Yeah, but that's not a proper cowboy. That's like filth, isn't it? You know, that's that's like the hey, the gold rush kind of thing. Have but... you watched like a up to date one? What Quentin Tarantino did called Django. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. It's not yeah. like a western, but it's kind of like there's a bit of. You know, it's kind do you, of. Do you, do you know? Do you know what we should? You know what we should do? We should do the three amigos. Well, the four amigos. We should do that. There should be me, you, Trevor, and Brian in in Canada, wherever you are. We should do the four amigos. We should go across the states and, and Canada, North America. We need to go to. We need to go and do a cowboy stomp somewhere. I tell you, it's. I love it. I love that that side of things. Well. You know, in another, in Brian, she looks like a girl. Brian, he's. Do you know what he's doing? He's so tight. Brian is that he he's waiting for it. Have you seen a picture of him lately? No. Oh, I, I saw a picture of him the other day. Honestly, he used to wait for me to go over to cut his hair because I used to use him as a model for shaving and cutting. Oh yeah, he's when, long hair. And he's, he's shaved. He, he was he was my backup model for whatever show we were doing. If we didn't. If the models didn't turn up, he was the one. So I think he's just waiting for me to go back, and he's he's grown and grown and grown his hair. If you wait, if you if you if you're listening to that or you listen to this back, Brian, you need a haircut, man. You really need a haircut. Jackie's just said 
I'd love to see you, Simon, on an horse. Well, let me just tell you a little story. We're about 14 year old. I was like long hair, we're like captain of football team at school. I was like the main man. We went to Isle of Man on a trip. And two days that we got were, were horse riding or pony trekking or whatever. First day they got there, they, picked, they had all these horses lined up. Every, and I got the biggest horse at lot. And I'm like, oh, Tom, like, oh, can look at me. I'm not baking this. The day after or the two days after, I didn't get picked. And I got a Shetland pony. <laughs> a couple of lads were laughing the bollocks off. I took my chances, but um, yeah, it was a it was a funny one. But look, guys, there's some stuff there for you to watch, and it's not just for our choices as well. It's you know a lot of people have said they're knackered. They're going to start looking at things next week, and we'll come up with stuff next week. You know, we might be on 21 days next week when we come to Barbara's Arms next week. 21 days left. It's so close to to being back and we'll come up with some different ideas but over this weekend while you've had a really good week uh, in terms of financially and you're all knackered and you're all a bit you know feeling a bit shit about the situation what's some of your favorite movies that you've watched over years what's some new stuff there's loads of box sets out there sometimes if by watching an old movie uh, something you've watched loads of times just takes you back to that moment when you watched it that music that big ending it makes you feel really good We've got some other stuff as well I want to tell you about as well. Um, just, just, just two seconds. I've just realised one of my all-time favourites. Top Gun. Top Gun? Top Gun. I mean, how, how, many, how many iconic moments is there in that film where you've got Ice, Maverick? I said this to my staff the other day. I said, oh, just call me Maverick. And I'm like... They don't even know, they haven't even heard, I mean, they haven't even heard of some of these films. I mean, when you realise that they, they haven't seen Top Gun, I'm like, are you for real? Callie McGillis. Rachel, yes. Rachel, the, getting to dress up tonight as Top Gun. The sexy you can put that thing. song on a new box. You've lost that loving feeling. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that, does it? When you think about no, it. Top Gun's you know, a good, that, that. I love it when he's sat in bar having a beer at the end and she goes and puts some money in the duke box. I'm a proper film buff, actually. When I'm speaking about this, I seem to know everybody in every movie and endings and everything. But uh, I don't watch a lot of TV, by the way, if anybody's watching from Wall. Um, I'm <laughs> very committed to I, work and stuff I, like I, that. I, I've been told by your lady that's all you do. She says yeah, you're well. researching, but the stuff you're researching isn't to do anything to do with clippers or male grooming. She knows, and she's amazed sometimes. I did a presentation yesterday morning, and I did it in between calls and everything. I said to her this morning, I went, see that presentation I did yesterday? And she looked over to me and she went, I don't want to even look at you. I'm old school, and I just get my head down. I seem to be very quick at getting the right words in. And I've got a great team, though, Gary, so that helps as well, having a good team behind you, things going to Charlotte and Chris in marketing and, that really does help and speed the job up for you, that you know that you can do a certain idea and concept and then it goes on to something to make it look good. So I'm not blowing me on track too to, much. But You know what, as well, though, when you've got that, those people behind you, it makes your job a lot easier, mate, doesn't it? You know, I mean, when you've got a good team, it, yeah. you know, it's a team effort. To, you know, we've got Matt, uh, we've got Paul and Ollie and, you know, some of our managers out there. Um, Richie, um, Cooper, you know, you, you, when they when they do things and you're thinking we should do that, and then it, you look on and it's been done, and you just think, "Good God, we made a good choice there." It, it, I always great. say in our meetings when we go back to Wall about a week after Salon International, and we, we we get everybody in the visitor centre where you'd be in the museum. And we'll get everybody in from production, from warehouse, from sales, and we do a big speech. And I'll make sure I say everybody's name. We cannot do, I cannot do my job on that main stage. And all you barbers and editors that come to watch us, I can't do that with like, with like you know, without Martin Linridge, without Paul Copperblatt, without Tony Huey, without Dana, without uh, Rosie, without Rob Smith, without Matt Smith. I can't, they, these are people you never even see on stage, but I can't do my job unless they've done their job. So I'm only a part of a team, and together, everybody achieves more. That's what team stands for. And I'll always say it, Wall, I front up a lot of stuff professionally, 
Um, but I can't, we've just got an amazing team. And so when I do a presentation and I write it all down, it then goes into Charlotte and she words it all. And then Chris gets into marketing and makes it look good. Um, but I do knock about with it. Got some great stuff coming up as well. We've got the uh, Wall Awards coming up in November as well, guys. It's either going to be on the 23rd or 30th of November, where we will announce the new Wall British Barber of the Year. And we'll announce the Wall British Barbershop of the Year as well, which is going to be uh, on the Wall Instagram live and also here on Barber's Arms as well live as well. So we'll get you tuned in next week or so what date that's going to be. Um, so tune into that. It's going to be a Monday, whichever way we look at it. Um, so that's going to be fantastic. British Hairdressing Awards are coming up as well, which are going to be live at the end of November as well. So there's lots of nice little things to put in your diary to... to um, to look forward to whilst we're getting working back to work. And I think in the next coming weeks, I want to talk to people about things that you're achieving, whether that's uh, fitness, weight loss, decor at home, uh, learning how to cook better, whatever we're going to do, send all your, your stuff into us it next week, especially when me and Gaz are doing his daily vlogs. Send out any, all that you've achieved while you're doing this next part of this. Uh, lockdown to send send it in to us. It's going to be tough for everybody, but I'm sure um, you you made of the best stuff now. You've already uh, you've already tasted it first time, um, and uh, you did it that well first time that they made you do it twice, and you'll fucking smash it. So from <laughs> me, have a great weekend, guys. Um, keep your heads up, everybody. Have a good rest, and then next week you've only got three weeks to get back into it, and. Uh, Hopefully, we can inspire you every Friday night on Barber's Arms with the best candor, the best co-host that I could ever work with. It's great to see you smiling again, mate. Um, and uh, we'll see you all next Friday. Gary, over to you. Well, I just, I mean, you know me. I just had one day off of smiling. It brought me on a bad and then I just, I was tipsed off, really. But uh, all you guys out there, remember... Furlough has been given to March. It's back to 80%. Get onto your accounts, whoever you do, who does your wages, 80% is, is your goal. 80% is now for self employed as well, and there's no cap. So you can top it up with uh, universal credit. So anybody who's fell through the cracks, just make sure you get onto your accountant or whoever deals with it. You need to claim. Uh, grant. It looks like it's going to be about 1,500 quid, below 15 grand. Over that, it's going to be 2,000, but it's only going to be paid every three weeks. Hopefully, that doesn't mean we're going to have a rollover and we're going to have to be locked down a little bit further, but it's going to be paid every three weeks. It's 1,340 quid. Get onto your local councils. If you access the 10 grand before, you will get it, but that isn't guaranteed yet because they haven't just passed it through Parliament. Um, second job, obviously, you're going to be paying 20% tax, but they should take that at source. So, people out there, stay safe, do the right thing, don't go and do any haircuts in somebody else's house. It just goes against everything what we're doing. We did it right the first time, most of us. There's a few in uh, Newcastle on the line that have, uh, I'm not going to name you, but you know who you are. You've been all over Facebook. Uh, there's a couple in Stoke that we know that you've been doing it, so don't do it. Don't bring us into disrepute. We've done a great job. Um, can I just say to my youngest daughter, Millie Machi, she's 16 tomorrow. Sorry we can't do anything, baby. It's just going to be, we're going to have a sweet 16 do whenever we get out of this madness, but we'll make it as special as we can. Um don't forget to follow our vlogs. Every other day, we've got Simon and myself, one each day. So mine's tomorrow, feeling rough on a mountain somewhere. Uh, rule commended and keep in touch and look after your staff. Just call in on somebody. If you know somebody lives on their own, just call in. Not call in as in sit in. Just phone them, ask them if they need anything. Look after each other. Love you. Simon Shaw. Or Mr. Good night, guys. Stay safe, everybody. Keep in touch. Good night. See you later, everybody. <laughs>